doing? We're here on June 19th um, in year 2003 in Philadelphia at the 85th meeting of the 85th meeting of the Andrew Kim Society, and I'll introduce Dr. Adolf Friedman and Carol Jennifer. Jennifer and Carol is up in the office. This is Jennifer Brown, who put together an incredible history collection uh, featuring the pioneers of um, in the area of endocrinology. Um, maybe you want to talk a little bit. Um, what do you want here? Um, well, how did you decide to choose these two people as um, a presentation? I was struck by lightning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when, I, when I got to your files, then it made me interested. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the display here, um, let's see, Jennifer, um, I am assuming that you had something to do with how it was put together? Um, yes, we got to Um, so these charts here is... Um, Those are the ones I got in the room that you put in the bank. I see. And they indicate his patients and uh, the different dosages. And and the the successes and failures. I see. So this is so really the, the process. The smaller chart is the failures, the larger chart is the successes. Mm -hmm. Are these the first group of patients that he worked with? Yes. It says up there for... Uh -huh. May 19, March 41 to March 46, for the treatments. And prior to that, he did some diagnostic work with his radioactive eye. Okay, and he started with rabbits in the late 1930s? Yeah. 38. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to focus now on the first panel uh, that says the use of radioactive iodine in the treatment of thyroid disorders. And it says, um, since disorders of the thyroid gland make up such a large portion of endocrinology, it is important to recognize breakthrough thyroid research and discoveries that have influenced endocrine investigation and treatment as a whole. Bring together pioneers in endocrinology and nuclear medicine, using radioactive iodine to treat forms of thyroid cancer and disease was one of the most notable